Okay, we're going to carry on with chapter 2.8, but we're going to look at example 2.12 in this uh, video. This is it, example 2.12. Uh, just a reminder, guys, that we are working in the 14th edition. I know in the, in, actually in the first, uh, this is the 14th edition. Uh, where does it say? Okay, there. 14th edition. I know in the first video I said 13th edition, but believe it or not, at that stage I didn't even know we were using a 14th edition. But now I do, and now I'm using the 14th edition. So it's 212 in the 14th edition. So the problem basically says, so we have this um, situation here. It says the roof is supported by cables as shown in the photo. If the cables exert forces FAB equals 100 Newton and FAC equals 120 Newton on the wall hook, uh, at A. Determine the resultant force acting at A. Express the result as a Cartesian vector. Okay, so we've got this hook there and we've got these two cables and they're each exerting a force on the cable. And in this diagram there's the hook. The, there are the two cables attached to the floor at B and C. The hook is at, at point A and we have a force of 100 newtons along that um, cable and a force of 120 newtons along that cable. So the question is now, what is the resultant force acting upon A? Okay. So what would you say is the first step for us to do? What, what's the basic idea? Is that we need to convert FAB and FAC into Cartesian vectors so that we can end up adding them. Because remember, guys, we are working in three-dimensional space. And whenever we're working in three-dimensional space, it makes it a lot easier if we convert all our forces into Cartesian vector form. So then um, when, we are doing uh, so when we're doing vector algebra, we, it, it, it's really a lot easier when we have our, vector, our forces in Cartesian vector form. So all we've got here are magnitudes. How would we convert these forces into vector form? Well, we would need to first get a unit vector UAB right and then we would and then we multiply and we'll, we'll go through this now but I'm just trying to give us the big picture we need to multiply this force with a vector that will give us a, a that direction but a vector that will not alter the magnitude that's why we need to multiply this with a unit vector from A to B similarly in order to convert this force into Cartesian vector notation we need to multiply this force by the unit vector from A to C. Okay, again, I'm going to say it again. Why a unit vector? Because if I multiply this by a unit vector, it gives this force the correct direction from A to C, but because it's a unit vector, it does not alter the magnitude of FAC. Okay, so, so let's, let's do this problem now. Okay, I'm just going to write it out here so we've... Right, there's our x, y, and z axes. Okay, there's point A, and um, point B is over there, and then we have point C over there, and um, actually that might just go a bit further. So, point, this is two meters. Of course, you can just look in your textbook, and this is four meters. And then the height here the height there is also four meters. Okay, so the first step that I like to do is I like to just get my coordinates down. What is A? What are the coordinates of A? It would be zero x, zero in the y, and then four in the z direction. What is the coordinates of B? B will be 4, that point there, B. So what's the coordinates of B? It's 4 in the x, it is 0 in the y, 0 in the z. And uh, the coordinates of C? 4 in the x, 2 in the y, 0 in the z. Now why do I do that? Because remember what we're trying to do, we've got this force here of FAB equals 100 
and we've got a force over here, FAC equals 120. So we're trying to convert these two forces into Cartesian vector notation so that we can add them up and get a resultant. How do we do that? We are looking for the unit vectors along these two directions. How do I calculate my unit vector? My unit vector from A to B is equal to the position vector AB divided by the magnitude of my position vector. So, and then UAC, the, pos uh, the unit vector from A to C, is equal to the position vector AC over the magnitude of AC. So the first step then is I need to calculate my position vectors RAB and RAC. So what is the position vector RAB? Again, I just want to remind you what is a position vector. A position vector just simply tells me how do I get from A to B? How far do I walk in the x direction and in the y direction and in the z direction for me to get from A to B? Okay. So that's why I like using just um, the first thing I need to do is I need to determine my coordinates of my points. So if you look at coordinate A, 0, 0, 4, and coordinate B, 4, 0, 0, ask yourself, how, how do I walk from A to B in the X, in the Y, and in the Z? So for me to go from X equals 0 to X equals 4, how far do I need to walk in the X? I need to walk 4 four meters in the x direction. Then, for me to uh, go from A to B, I need to walk zero in the, in the y, and I need to end up at zero. Okay, so how far have we walked in the y? Zero. So I'm just going to write that there. We've gone zero in the j. Then what about the k? Uh, we, we started four. We started four in the, in the z direction, and we ended zero. So do you see that we need to walk minus 4k? And what are the units of the, of the position vector? It's meters. Okay? Now what is the magnitude of RAB? Because we also need the magnitude. The magnitude is going to be 4 squared plus minus 4 squared square root, which is equal to 5,66 meters. Again, guys, I want to, to see, I want you to see that we have this in meters. That's very important. Okay? Now, what about RAC? And remember, guys, at any point, uh, you're welcome to pause the video and then try it on your own and then see if you've got it right. Okay, so RAC, what is a position vector AC? It's telling me how do I walk from A to C? How far do I go in the X, the Y, and the Z? to get from A to C, all right? So here's my A and there's my C. How far do I have to walk to get from zero to four? I need to walk four in the I. Then how far do I walk in the, in the Y direction from zero to two? I need to walk plus two J. And from four to zero, I need to walk minus four K. Again, meters, the position vectors are in meters. And so what is the magnitude of this position vector? I'm not going to carry it out. You can just look in the textbook. The mag this magnitude, 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared square root, gives me 6 meters. So now, UAB is then equal to the, vector, uh, the position vector divided by the magnitude of that position vector. So we have 4i minus 4k divided by... 5,66. I'll just split them here. Let me just finish this one. 4 over 5,66i minus 4 over 5,66k. And again, what are the units of uh, the unit vector? The units of the unit vector are the honor units. It's dimensionless because we've got meters at the top and we're dividing by meters at the bottom. If uh, we have force at the top, we would divide by force at the bottom. A unit vector is, is by design, it is dimensionless. Uh, and I'll explain to you now the, the importance, okay? So let's just finish this off here. This 
actually, yeah, I don't have the full calculation, but that's the that's UAB. Okay, it's absolutely fine to give it like that. There's UAB. Then UAC is what? It's 4I divided by 6. Rather, 4 over 6 in the I plus 2 over 6 in the J minus 4 over 6 K. There's no units. No units because... It is meters divided by meters. The position vector is units, meters. The position vector is in, has meters as its units. Unit vector, I'm, I'm saying meters, this is in meters, that is in meters, we divide by meters. Guys, what is the magnitude of a unit vector? What's the, what's the magnitude? It's one. It, go and test it out. This squared plus this squared square root, right? This squared plus this squared plus this squared gives you a, a, a magnitude of 1. And I'll, and I'll explain now in more detail why we want that. Okay. So, actually, um, that's our unit vector right there. Okay. So, now, so we've got our, the magnitudes of our force. We've got our ma magnitudes of our, our two forces. And now, finally, we've got our unit vectors UAB and UAC. Now, in order for me to calculate or, or convert FAB into Cartesian vector force form, I need to multiply by F the magnitude of that force times by the unit vector. Okay, now, again, the main thing we need to see, guys, is how we want to convert this, this force into vector form. So what do we need? We need a vector in that direction so that if we multiply this force by a vector we will give that magnitude a direction the problem is that or rather let's let's say this an option for us is to just multiply that by the position vector but why is that wrong why is it wrong to multiply this force of 100 newton by the position vector i mean the position vector is the correct direction but what is the problem with doing that? The problem, as I mentioned in the previous video, is that the magnitude of this position vector is not 1. For example, in this case, it's 5,66. And the unit is meter. So if I would say, if I would say that FAB, I need to, I need to multiply this, uh, this force by a vector so that I can give this force a direction, if I say FAB and I multiply by the position vector AB, it is absolutely true that I've given that force the correct direction. But the problem is that I've multiplied that 100 by 5,66. So I've actually altered the magnitude of that force. That's the first problem. So if I do this, I'm actually saying 100, and then I'm multiplying actually by this, 5,66. I'm changing the magnitude of this force, which is absolutely wrong. That's, that's the first problem. The second problem by multiplying by a position vector is that my units will end up being Newton meter because I'm saying Newton times a meter, and that's not what we're after. We're after Newton. So if I say force times unit vector, I am giving it the correct direction, absolutely correct direction, right? Uh, but I'm, multi I'm not altering the magnitude of this force, and this is unitless. It doesn't, it, uh, sorry, yeah, it's dimensionless. It doesn't have any units. So I will basically say 100 times UAB, which is 4 over 5,66I minus 4 over 5,66J Newton. And the textbook tells me, that is equal to 70.7 I minus 70.7 K Newton. So that is the force now represented in Cartesian vector notation. If we do the same thing with this one, we say FAC is equal to the magnitude of the force FAC times by the unit vector AC. And that is 120 times 4 over 6 I plus 2 over 6j minus 4 over 6k newton.
Newton, and that is ATI plus 40 J minus 80 K Newton. Okay, guys, have you got that? But now the goal is that we need to find the resultant. So that is why when we're in three-dimensional space, we need to convert everything into vector form, Cartesian vector form, because now I've got FAB and FAC in Cartesian vector form. All I need to do is, I'm not actually going to do that now. You can do this on your own. All I need to do is say F resultant is FAB plus FAC. Okay? So I just need to add that to that and I get my answer. Okay? So this is the answer. All right, so guys, is that clear? You need to understand what are position vectors, you need to understand how to calculate unit vectors, and you need to understand how to convert forces into Cartesian vector form. Okay? Any questions, again, email me or put some comments in the comment section. Cheers.